Okay, hey everyone. Uh, today I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to use debugger. Debugger is a really useful tool in your daily programming life. Uh, you basically don't need to, you know, staring at your screen to find out what your bug is. You have to step through your line or your coding line, like one by one, and then we will get like which one is like maybe not probably that good. Okay. So for example, here I have an example called two sum. Okay. And uh, it's gonna return the index of two number in the num list such that they add up to the target. For example, we have a list that says two, seven, eleven, fifteen, and our target is nine. We can see that two and seven, they add up to nine. So we're gonna return the index of two and seven, which is zero and one. Okay, uh, then uh, I have a code right in here. It's the one like uh, way to solve the problem. Uh, it's correct in some case, but it's not correct in all cases. For example, we can say print, Let's just copy the example here, like two sum, two seven, two seven, eleven, fifteen, and nine. Okay. Uh, let's just comment this one out, and uh, let's run. Okay. So we expect zero and one because that's the index for two and seven, and uh, we actually get that. Okay. So it's working correct for this example. But uh, if we change to another example, okay. Uh, okay. We say that the list is three, five, and nine, and we want our target to be 10. In this case, like you can see that in the list, there's no two number in this list that's add up to 10, right? Like, uh, we, although we have a five here, but we actually need two five to get a 10, right? One five cannot get a 10, okay? But when we run the, so the, so this example should return empty this, right? Because we cannot find like such combination. Let's run it. But you actually return one one, which is not empty this for sure. Then means that we have some like, uh, some wrong like inside the function, right? Okay, then how are we going to solve this problem? How we, how we can find ways wrong on the function implementation? Then we use our debugger tool. What the debugger tool basically do is that you can set a breakpoint to the function. For example, like you can just set to set a breakpoint, you can just click like here and you can see there's a red dot, that's your breakpoint. Okay, what the breakpoint gonna do is like this tells the Python or tells your program this says that okay, I want you to run till this line, but what happened after you run till this line? Don't run it yet. Pause, and we I gonna run it step by step or line by line. Basically, if I do if I continue or start the debugger. So the program is gonna pause after you run till the breakpoint. Since our breakpoint set to line 15, so you gotta run to your line 15. And uh, we can decide what happened after the code run to this line. We can inspect the line, inspect the code line by line. We have three different ways to inspect the code. One step into, one step over, one step out. Basically, these three uh like button basically tells you like what you want to do with how you want to continue processing the program or your code. Like, do you want to step into or step over or step out? I'm going to talk a little bit about that later. And let's go back to the bottom session. There's one thing called stack data. Okay. So, what's a stack data? So, it basically keeps track of all the like variables you have right now. So, right now, we only have some like global variables, which is list and local, because we haven't defined any local variable yet. But later on, if we run into the to sum function, you're gonna tell us, or you're gonna you can show you can see some like local variables such as like i or j on top of the global. Okay, so let's get started. So first, since we want to inspect what's happening inside to sum function, right? So we want to use the step into uh button because step into basically tell the Python that you want to visit what's happened inside this line, right? We have a two sum function inside this line. 
if you want to visit the two sum function, you're gonna step into two sum function. Then you're gonna to go to the implementation of two sum function and run it later. Okay. And after we go into the two sum function, uh, we also have a choice. Do we want to step into or you want to step over? Okay. So look at nine nine line. They actually have something we can step into. For example, they have length and range, right? But those functions are implemented by implemented by Python, so we know they are for sure correct. We don't need to know like what happened inside the range or what happened inside the lens function. So we can just do step over. So you're gonna go from nine, nine to nine ten. Okay. So basically, what's the difference between step over and step into? Is that like step over is you are executing the line on the same level. So since line nine and line 10, they're both inside the two sum function. So they're on the same level. So you use step over to continue. But if you, for example, what we did over here, uh, you have a function that's inside of line 15 and you want to visit that function, then you step into to go inside that function. Okay. And uh, now we are going from nine nine to nine 10. We see there's an I here. We can see our local variable stack. We also have a thing called I, which is reference to zero right now. Okay. And uh, let's step over again because we don't want to go inside anything on line 10. Then we step over. We can see that J right now is also reference to zero. Okay. So that's the magic of debugger is that you can uh, see what happened, like what's all the local variables or all the function values like reference to, like give to you, like uh, when you are executing or going through the program line value. Okay. And now we are reaching the line 11. We know that nums i is i is zero, j is zero. We know nums, then nums i we know is equals to two and nums j is also equals to two if which is not the target. Then you're not gonna ask you the return line, right? And now we are going to J. We can see J is now zero. And after the line, we say now J is one. And we can see that, and we're gonna keep executing, keep executing, keep executing. So we can see that the value of J actually changed. And seems like uh, you know, after J gets to two, because we know the length of nums is three, right? So after you get to two, then the for loop gonna loop through all the available like numbers already. So you're gonna terminate and we're gonna go back to the outer for loop. And we do it again. We can see that I also changed from zero to one. And we see that, okay, so we're at line 12, which means that we're gonna return, right? So we can see that here, our I is equal to one and J is also equal to one. And nums I, which is equal to our nums one, which is seven, oh, sorry, which is five, and nums j, which is also nums one, which is equals to five, five plus five is equal to 10. That's why we will return. So you see that like how clear it is, like you have, you know, to actually see, okay, why you gonna return? And what's the value when it's gonna return? See, As also like so when we add this line, we actually find our bug, right? Because num i is five, num j is also five, but i and j are actually referenced to the same one, then you are basically counting the same like index twice, which we don't want it to happen because, you know, uh, i and j are actually, like we want them to be different number, right? Because we want to get two number in the list, but now we are getting the same number. So it's not good. So what we actually want to do is we find the bug already, we can just step out because we don't need to look at the two sum again because we, we find the bug already and uh, we step out again and the thing got like terminated. So step out basically like go from like one level to a pair level. So if you go from like two sum to step out, so you're gonna go to like what happened after two sum, two sum like ask you. Okay, then See, now we find there's actually a bug. So what we're gonna do, we, we find the bug is that I and J reference to the same number, but we don't want it to reference to the same number. So what we can do is we can make J not start from zero, but start from I plus one. Okay, if J start from I plus one, it means that I and J can never be equal, right? And uh, let's run the program again. We can see that it's a written 
empty list. That's actually what we want, right? Because there's no such two number inside a list of three, five, nine that gets, you know, as add up to 10. Okay, so uh, I think it's gonna help you a little bit on how to use debugger. We have three tools. We have step into, step over, and step out. Step into is go inside the function. Step over is go from this line to next line. Step out is go from like the inner function to the outer function. For example, go from like to sum to the print line after outside of the to sum function. Okay. And uh, we also have the stack data. Basically, you keep track of all the data when you add that line. And uh, you can use it to find like what's all the uh thing you want to find and they use them to find out like where, where is the arrow in your program okay i think that's a really good introduction for you right now to get a little bit like uh, experience with debugger also please practice like practice make you feel better and uh, yeah i hope you all enjoy using debugger and uh, enjoy csc one okay have a good day